Researchers are hard at work monitoring the southern sea otter population. They want to learn everything they can about these animals in order to better protect them. Here's a bit more about how and why they do it. Near Santa Barbara, California, a group of sea otter hunters gear up. But these aren't like the people who once decimated the sea otter population to near extinction. These hunters are out to help the species. We're capturing uh, live sea otter so we can learn about the live population and we're taking samples and we want to learn about how they're doing health-wise so we can you know, better manage them. The team of scientists from various federal, state, and private wildlife groups are collaborating on an expansive, long-term study to monitor the health and recovery of the entire southern sea otter population. It's a huge job. We're going to be hopefully instrumenting and tagging 40 individuals, males and females, and monitoring their health. So we're going to do a lot of collection of uh, blood samples, whisker samples, hair samples, and see how they compare to some of the other animals in the further up the coast, further up the range. And we'll see what their habits are, what they eat. I'm ready. Uh, 120 heart rate. Okay. 16 respiration. My name is Tim Tinker. I'm a research biologist with U.S. Geological Survey Western Ecological Research Center. Um, I'm the principal investigator for sea otter studies conducted here in California. Just approaching Coho Cove here. There's a really gigantic kelp bed, so we are uh, we're just going to work along the inside of it using this land here as a cover so that we don't we're not seen by the otters. The first step in the process is catching a sea otter not exactly easy. Otters are extremely wary of humans. So we have a, a group of otters in that kelp bed right over here, um, which is great. It uh, looks like a, somewhere between seven and ten otters, and then a few other single animals sort of scattered around. The challenge is otters have an incredibly acute sense of smell. So whenever we're setting up for captures, we have to be downwind of them. If the otters catch a whiff, see a bubble, or get the smallest hint that people are around, they'll bolt. So in order to get close enough for capture, the team uses specialized equipment and a well-developed technique. Do you want to use the slow scooter or the leaky scooter? Um, <laughs> those are good options. Whoever's leading should have the slow scooter. Agreed. It's a kind of a, an elaborate procedure that uh, has evolved over over many years of doing this. Um, we, we start by just going out there to the kelp beds where sea otters, um, sea otters rest. We can only capture them when they're resting in the kelp um, because we need them to be um, fairly motionless to capture them with the scuba techniques that we use. We'll get our boat as close as we can. We very quietly deploy some scuba divers into the water um, and they have some very specialized gear. They're using rebreather, um, closed circuit scuba gear so they're not making any bubbles. The rebreathers we use are 100% oxygen, so they basically just take the carbon dioxide out of our breath and add oxygen back into the system, and they keep a constant volume. Everything sort of has to be second nature because you've also got this scooter and trap, and in the end you're working your way towards the sea otter. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, under the Federal Endangered Species Act, has issued the researchers special permits to do this work. They use underwater scooters to move fast and quiet on their approach. The net they use is called a Wilson trap, which is essentially a big mesh bag suspended in an aluminum cage that's mounted on a pole attached to the diver propulsion vehicle. When the divers see an otter on the surface, they come up from below like white sharks. As the trap breaks the surface, a cord is pulled and the animal is safely caught. We transfer them into otter boxes on the boat. Um, and these are just these, these crates that are good to keep them cool. We can soak them in the water to, you know, because they, otters with their incredible fur can overheat. We bring them over here um, to the pier and bring them ashore. And that's when a lot of really important things begin to happen. Each captured otter is taken to a well-outfitted mobile lab on shore, where the vets quickly go to work. The clock is ticking. The otter will be unconscious for only an hour or so. 
There's a whole slew of people waiting there to work on that animal. They do anesthetize the animal because um, these are wild animals with very sharp teeth. So it's very important that the animal is anesthetized first. And then uh, the animal would be brought into um, a vet lab, such as the one that we're in here, and um, they would get a little tiny incision where they didn't plant a little transmitter so we could track that animal and keep monitoring it and that's what really gives us the information about the long-term health of these individuals they have multiple small lacerations they would definitely get a full health exam and then they would be uh, re the anesthesia would be reversed so they would wake up back inside their box and they would be released and typically we have animals for about an hour and a half to two hours and then they're back in the water. The surgically implanted radio transmitter can send a signal for two to four years. Using a special receiver, researchers can track the animal from over a mile away. In addition, the otters are also marked with uniquely colored flipper tags on the webbing of their hind feet, so scientists can visually identify them. So you have staff that are walking up and down these coasts? Every day. Otters? Yeah, literally seven days a week. There'll be people out who will be tracking wow. them. There's people out right now, actually, um, as Along we speak. Along these coasts. Along these <laughs> coasts, they're everywhere, yeah. yeah. So once we've heard the, a signal that from the transmitter of a particular otter, we can actually record who they're with. For instance, if they're resting in a kelp bed, what, are their, what are, other otters are they with? Do they have a pup if it's a female? And then if they do have a pup, you know, are they able to successfully wean that pup over the next six months? Um, and then we can actually directly observe when they're feeding to see what prey they're consuming. With sea otters, we can visually observe them every single day. Um, they're always using this really nearshore band of habitat. And that makes, them, that makes them particularly unique for, well, for any marine species in terms of our ability to learn about how they're using that habitat, how they're interacting with other species in the ecosystem. Um, and that's really what makes them such a good indicator species for this ecosystem. So in studying sea otters, it allows me to study behavior, population dynamics, community ecology, and food web dynamics. So they allow me to sort of do everything that makes it fun to be a scientist. There are vets, divers, biologists, wildlife managers, and more, coming from multiple agencies who've been working up and down the coast for decades in order to learn more about this species. This incredible long-term comprehensive study has given us a view of sea otters like we've never seen them before. And it's taught us a lot about the world we share.